How awesome would it be if you just can nail your skin tones every single time, regardless of if you're working with darker skin tones, my skin tones, or even lighter skin tones? Get excited because I'm gonna show you things that are going to turn you into a scalpel. You will know every single time how to nail your skin tones after watching this video. And if this gets you pumped, then do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, and let's get into it. We're gonna go to shotdeck.com and our goal is to look for a screenshot with multiple different skin tones, dark to light. And we want it to be not as stylized. In my case, I kind of know what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to type in triangle of sadness. And then in here, I'm gonna pick one of these shots, okay? This is absolutely perfect. Click right here and then right click and download it. We have different skin tones. We have Asian skin tones. We have Caucasian. We have like paler Caucasian and we have darker skin tones. This is everything that we need. Once you download it, you're just gonna bring it into your timeline. And that's exactly what I did here. So the first thing that we need to do is we want to clean up this shot because right now it's not giving us the perfect representation. Why? Because it's not properly balanced. And obviously because they're going for a look and we can see it. Everything is living in this quadrant and we can see our red is up here. Our green is up here. Our blue is up here instead of like a pure white. To properly balance this image, the fastest way to do it is just clicking on this eyedrop and then clicking in the white area right here and boom. We can see our red, green, and our blue is all at the same level. But even a better, more solid way to know that you've nailed your white balance is by using yours truly's DCTL called QT Charts. There's gonna be a link in the description if you wanna download and play with it. We wanna make sure that this is set to Rec. 709 since this image was in Rec. 709. So we wanna make sure that our primaries and transfer function is set up properly. Once it is, I can go ahead and click on Highlight Neutrals. So if I turn this off, clearly we can see that the dark areas are still somewhat neutral, but not the highlights. But after our balance kicks in, it is perfect. So that's all we need to do here. So at this point, we are basically ready to go to understand the next level, which is how do we know where Caucasian skin tones should be in terms of pigmentation, in terms of the exposure? What about Asian skin tones? What about darker skin tones? And to solve that mystery, I'm going to give you Ansel Adams chart that I've downloaded. So I'm gonna have a link to that and the reference image and the practice footage that we're going to be using. You're going to get links to all of that in the description. And if that gets you excited, then do me a favor, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel. All right, if I go to our middle gray, clear north sky, dark skin and average weathered wood. So dark skin is supposed to live here, but I wouldn't consider African-American skin to be dark. I would consider like Indian or some of like Hispanic darker tones to be dark skin. And I would consider like African skin tones to fall under here or even here at times. And then with Caucasian skins, it's gonna be about a stop over. And then if it's really light skin, pale skin is gonna be about two stops over. If you're right under the light and if you're Caucasian, you might be two and a half, three stops over, okay? So these rules are there to just for you to gauge and understand where everything's supposed to be and then just go from there. So now if I come back here, I can turn on my false color in QT charts and get to read this. So remember the gray, for the dark skin tone. And we have dark skin tone here, but it's not the darkest skin tone. So we have our perfect gray point, and then it falls a little bit under that, and then it falls even lower, okay? So far, so good. Because then when we go to our Caucasian skin tones, what we see is that it is sitting right here, right here. So a stop and a half over. Then when we go to our pale Caucasian skin tone, even more of the skin tone is gonna be living right here. When we go to our Asian skin tones, I mean, obviously also consider the lighting change, okay? Uh, and there's obviously a vignette that's happening. That's why this is falling off a little bit. And the main light is right here. The main focus is right here. But regardless, our Asian skin tones are gonna be somewhere around here and then a little bit over that, okay? So, so far, so good with what we've seen with Ansel Adams chart. And that's why these things are extremely important to make sure that you always nail your skin tones. 
Now, let's move on to the pigmentation. We want to make sure where after our image is balanced, each person's skin should sit. And it's not always going to be this line, right? Like everybody talks about, oh, go right here, turn on your skin indicator. It's always going to be on the spot. Well, that's not true because if I go to my qualifier and if I hover over here, this is a lot more to the yellow side. Like you can see it right here. It's more toward yellow than if I go to him, which is magenta, but they're both white, right? And then if I go to darkish brown skin tone, it's going to sit like somewhere in the middle. And if we go and turn on our skin hue indicator, that's going to tell us even more. So you're going to see that majority of the time, OK means this is where the skin tone is supposed to be, meaning this straight line. But then your green is going to be it's leaning a little bit toward yellowish skin tones. And then red is like it's leaning a little bit toward like pink. And that is perfect. I just know this with muscle memory. Caucasian and dark skin tones are going to have a little bit more pink pigmentation. Italians and Asians like are going to have a little bit more olive yellow in their skin tones like undertones. So knowing all of this information was necessary again for us to nail our skin tones. This is the shot that we're going to be working on. And as I mentioned, you have access to that link is going to be in the description. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to balance this shot. Get it in a good spot so then we can start actually seeing what's happening. And I'm going to do that by using my HDR palette. I'm going to go under my offset. And what I want to do is I've already dropped my QT charts. This time my image is shot on Sony FX3. So I converted it from S-Log3 to DaVinci White Gamut as my working color space. Then I'm taking my DaVinci White Gamut, converting it to 709. And then that's why my chart this time the primaries and function is set to DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate because that's my working color space. That's different than the last time where it was set to Rec. 709 because we were bringing in a still from ShotDeck.com, a graded still. Let's turn on our false color because now we know where we need to keep our skin tone. So remember, our darker people are going to be more in here and lower. Our Caucasian, and especially he has a lot more light on him. If I turn this off and show you, there's so much more like a spotlight on him, but I'm not going to overcompensate. I'm still going to use the knowledge that I've gained and I'm going to build my look around that. So I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. So our Middle Eastern skin tone, we're keeping it a little over mid gray. We can even bring it down a little bit, but this is where. I think everybody is should look perfect, and they do. They look really good. So our skin tones now, based on our information and what we saw from this perfect shot, we're able to like really nail this, okay? So I'm going to keep it here, but it's not balanced. I can just tell, like the white is not white. I'm going to go in my global temp, and I'm going to start cranking it back. This is looking good, but now it's looking too magenta, okay? So I'm going to use my tint and I'm going to pull it back. But now what I want to do is I want to go in here and instead of this, I want to turn on my skin hue indicator and I want to use that as a gauge. So I'm going to keep pulling it back. That's too much. I want to put more magenta on my guy because I know Zohair has a lot of magenta in his skin. And we saw in our darker skin tones, that we had a little bit of magenta. That to me looks good. I think I just want to add a little bit more pop and a little bit more contrast. So based on our contrast video, because we're in DaVinci White Gamut, I'm going to type 0.335. So that's our mid gray. And if you want to learn more about what I'm talking about here, check out this video. Link is going to be in the description. And now I just want to go in my contrast and crank it um, and keep it somewhere around here so it's looking healthy. And now I want to go see if our false color is looking good. So our false color is looking good still. Next thing that we need to see is our saturation levels. So if I go here in our saturation levels, the thing that you need to know when it comes to pleasant skin tones, regardless of the screen that you're watching your content on, is going to be somewhere from here to here, okay? 0.45 to 0.75. And that's exactly what we see here. Now, there is no hard and fast rule when it comes to saturation. It's going to depend on the picture and the show that you're working on. So here we see that it is pretty up there. It's like right here. So the skin tones are actually very saturated. So I want to go right here. I want to use our color slice. I want to go under skin. I want to go, go under saturation, pull it. 
And again, I don't want to just do too much of it. But what happens if I park it somewhere around here, 70-ish, and I want to come out? This looks really freaking pleasant. And now if I go here, now we got the greens, right? And if I turn it on again, see, we got the greens right here and we got this. So like now we're living between 0.6 and 0.75 and that's a big jump from where we were. I mean, everything was nuking before, okay? So now if I come out and I go between the two, this to this, like we're starting to see that it's looking pretty healthy. I feel like we can bring it up a little bit just for our case. And then I can just go under my contrast again and crank it a little bit more. And then if I see it back and forth, I mean, we're starting to look really, really freaking good. I mean, you know, you just got to remember, we came from here to this right here and how good it's looking and like how we're nailing everybody's skin tones. So whether we go to skin hue indicator, we got magenta in his skin. This is okay, which it should be. Remember we said Middle Eastern, Italian, and Asian skin tones are going to have that. And then when it comes to darker skin tones, we have a little bit more pink pigmentation. When we go to our false color, right? Like, so he is going about a stop, stop and a half over because he's the brightest and plus he has spotlight on him. When we look at Middle Eastern skin tones, like we have just a middle gray or little a stop over that. And then when we look at our darker skin tones, they are right at the mid gray point and then dropping about a stop to two stops, just like we saw in our other perfect examples. And that's why it's very, very important to have an image like that available in your power grade at all times. So no matter which project you're working on, you can pop that open. And more importantly, save the still that we created, because remember, we had to balance it. So save this still in your power grade and then bring it into any project and pop it open next to your shot or just bring it into your timeline how we did. And then that way you can just like really learn to make sure that you're nailing every single aspect of your skin tones, regardless of if you're working with darker skin tones, brighter skin tones, or in a shot like this, which is pretty difficult. A lot of people have tons of windows going on. They're using garbage mats and they're individually controlling each person's skin. That's because they don't have the deeper understanding to know where everything should sit. Now, the only thing that I would control here if I wanted to, would be to create just one face shape and then pull him down just a tiny bit so then I don't have to like overcompensate so much. But I feel like just how delicate I was with my balancing, it's not a problem. I got it handled. I got it handled perfectly. And this is where we ended up. Because we had the proper knowledge and information, we were super surgical about our entire operation to just go bam, bam, bam and we're done. We absolutely nailed our skin tones. Hopefully you enjoyed this surgical procedure when it comes to nailing your skin tones. If you have any specific topics or issues that you're facing in DaVinci Resolve, leave a comment below and I will cover those topics in the future videos. If you wanna pick up QT charts, get pumped because for YouTube fam only, you can get 15% off, coupon is on the screen and link is in the description. And on that note, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon and I'll see you in the next one. Peace fam.